How do you represent signed integer values in binary where you only have zeros and ones and there is no negative symbol that you can use as part of your character set? Well, the world is effectively settled on two's complement, which is a very clever solution to this problem. So let's take a look. The motivation for two's complement is we've got this interesting challenge, right? So you can imagine, okay, uh, I'm thinking about, if I'm thinking about just a nibble's worth of bits, so imagine we have four bits, that means we have uh, two to the fourth or 16 possible different combinations of bits, right? And one of the first ideas is, well, okay, if we want to represent one in, signed by, in a signed binary representation, um, we could represent it like this. And what if we wanted to represent negative one? Well, sort of a naive solution to this is, um, or I shouldn't say just necessarily a naive, or, or a first approximation of a solution might be, well, why don't we just treat this leading zero or the high order bit? Why don't we uh, make that either equ equivalent to a plus or a minus sign where zero might be positive and maybe one is negative. So maybe that's how you would represent um, a negative value. So this would be negative one, say. Uh, and then you could represent a range from um, negative seven to positive seven, right? But the weird thing is, uh, if you try and go with this approach, right? The strange problem you run into is, well, here is a positive zero, right? And then you've got, if you uh, change this value to a one, and you said that that one was symbolizing a negative value, you would also have negative zero. And this duplication of zero values leads to some funny instances. Like it, it doesn't, zero is an unsigned value, right? There's no uh, disagreement on that. So it feels like this is potentially a wasted opportunity. Like we probably could squeeze one more number into this repre representation if we looked at it in a different way. And so two's complement is gonna take a different strategy to avoid this problem because here we can only really truly represent, uh, even though we have 16 combinations, 15 values, right? Because plus and minus zero, is two sides of the same coin, and, and what does that even mean? Okay, so let's take a look at two's complement. And the idea of two's complement, I wanna just give you a, a very quick overview of, and then we'll dive into. So the idea of two's complement is, okay, let's say we have these four bits, and this one is the one's position, this one's the two's position, the four's position, and the eight's position. What if, and this is a very clever design idea, and I want to emphasize that this is a design idea. This, there were humans involved in, in deciding, you know, how do we best spend these bits that we have available to us? And so the design idea behind two's complement is, what if we actually made this high order bit negative? Right? What if we made just that one bit, whatever its value previously was, so if we had eight bits, uh, the, the highest order bit would be the negative bit there. But if we have four bits and the highest order bit corresponds to the eights position, make that value negative eight, right? And so this has some interesting trade-offs, right? So one is, if we wanted to represent the value one, how would we do that? Well, we keep the first leading bit zero and we would have zero, 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 one. And that's great because this is actually the same value uh, as the positive one in a signed uh, uh, integer representation, in an un unsigned integer representation, right? And so for the, the bits other than the highest order bit in two's complement, um, whether you're dealing with a positive value or a negative value, uh, or, or if, if you've got a positive value in two's complement, you're gonna have that same positive bit pattern for those low order bits in, 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 in an unsigned pattern, right? So, uh, well, how do we represent zero? Well, that's kind of interesting. Um, well. Uh, zero is the same as zero uh, as it was before. And notice there's only one zero here. If we had all ones, what we would have is, uh, let me just separate this out. If we had all ones in our bits here, we would have negative eight plus four plus two plus one, right? So that would be uh, uh, negative one is what this would bit pattern would represent, right? And so we can't form two different zeros here. We can effectively form uh, 16 different unique values and zero only can occur once in this bit pattern. For an example of why, well, you, we can see that we can represent negative eight, right? That bit pattern would be negative eight. Uh, and if we wanted to think about, well, what's the largest bit pattern we could do? Well, that would just mean that this leading bit would have to be zero because we're not gonna start with a big negative offset. 
and we would have one, 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 and so the highest value is seven. So there's a little bit of asymmetry here because with a nibble, the values we could represent with a signed integer are gonna be from uh, negative eight to seven. So we can't uh, represent quite as large of a positive number, but we still have 16 unique values here and we're not duplicating the zeros place. There's some other really interesting uh, components to this that we'll talk about as we move forward. So the big idea is we're gonna negate the highest order bit and treat every other bit the same as in an unsigned integer, right? So it's effectively as if we're just shifting every single number that we can represent down by the amount of uh, the highest order bit, right? We're, we're effectively, when we have that bit, we're subtracting that amount uh, from, from the top and then we can represent values in the negative range from there and uh, uh, almost as many in the positive range and off by one in the positive range. So how do we think about this? Well, we can once again apply a very similar strategy to how we were looking at unsigned representation. So here we have binary signed representation and we've got a, a very similar strategy for computing uh, in the, the value, uh, the decimal value of a signed twos complement integer uh, from its bit pattern. So here, what we're seeing is, uh, if we think about this bit field or this bit vector, where the index 0, 1, 2, 3 is represented, so this is uh, the, the bit vector B, and those values are represented here for reference, and the width of this bit vector is four because there are four digits in it, right? And so what we're saying is we can represent, or we can, uh, we can, we can use a, a mathematical formula with a summation that has the, the pattern shown below, which is slightly more involved because we're pulling out that negative term from our summation, which is our highest order bit, and then we're just gonna sum the others the same way. So this, pat this, this, this mathematical formula looks a little bit overwhelming on, on first pass, right? But notice this term is just our high order bit, and this is everything except for the high order bit, and we're doing exactly the same thing that we did with uh, unsigned integer representation. So let's uh, let's actually try this out. So uh, we're, we're saying, okay, the first term is negative and b to the w minus one, well, w is four, so three, b three is one, so negative one, multiplied by two to the w net minus one, so two to the third, right, is our first term. So this is negative eight, right? And uh, then we go on to the summation. Right? And so now we're gonna sum the rest of our terms. So our summation starts from w minus two. So that's uh, going to be, let me actually write out the summation here first. So w minus two is going to be uh, two. i is gonna start from the low order bit zero. And we're saying b index i multiplied by two to the i, right? And from here, okay, well let's expand this term. So we're saying uh, b zero multiplied by two to the zero plus b uh, index one multiplied by two to the one plus b index two multiplied by two uh, to the second, right? Or two squared, right? So if we keep working through this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just substitute on this line. So b zero is zero. So that term is going to cancel out. Uh, b one is one and two to the one is two, right? So I'm actually just gonna go ahead and zero that term out and this is gonna be two and then b two, is one. So one times two squared is gonna be four, all right? So here we have uh, plus two plus four and negative eight. And what we see is that's gonna be six, uh, subtract eight from it, so it would be negative two, right? Or negative eight plus six is gonna be negative two. And so this bit pattern would encode the value negative two using a signed integer and two's complement. And two's complement winds up being what every programming language uh, in, in every modern system that you use for signed integer values uh, is, is gonna default to. This is the de facto standard for signed integer representation. So in the slide, you'll see that exact same process uh, in notes and you can follow along with it there uh, in, in the same detail we just did. And now the question that is another interesting thing that we should have to think about with two's complement is how do we negate a value? How do we go from a positive representation to a negative representation? In our simpler scheme, it was simple. You just flip that first bit and then you're done. But as we've seen, there's not necessarily, and if I go back to this slide, 
Notice that uh, this represents negative two, but if we looked at only those first three bits, the low order bits, that would be a value of six, right? Uh, two plus four would be six. But this is representing negative two because that first bit is an offset that, that brings us all the way back down to the maximal, uh, to its bit fields value. Uh, in this case, uh, negative two to the four, or sorry, negative two to the three or eight. Uh, and so we're starting from a different place. So the negation is not quite as straightforward as if we just had to flip one bit. But it turns out there's a really clever, interesting trick. Uh, and I'll link to some more information on the, the true mathematics behind this slide that make this all work uh, because it's a little bit beyond our concerns in this discussion. But let me just show you the trick that you can use to negate a two's complement number. So first, we're gonna take the inverse of our bit field. So imagine we've got a bit field uh, 0, 0, 001, and we know that in uh, that, that's representing in the encoding of the value one. So the first step in trying to negate one, we're trying to get negative one, right? So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, flip all our bits or take the complement, the ones complement is what we would call this. Uh, so we take the complement here and notice now uh, we have negative two, right? Because this was exactly the bit field we just looked at the uh, signed representation of on the previous slide, right? Uh, we have negative eight in the first bit, plus four plus two, which leads to a negative two uh, representation. So how do we get from negative two to negative one? Well, we add one, right? So we add one value onto the uh, negation or the, the, the complement of our original bit field. So to get a negative number in a two's complement encoding, we flip all the bits, we take the complement, and then we add one. And this works both ways. So if we start from negative one, which is where we left off, right? So this is, let's go in reverse and let's make sure this, this actually works the other way too. So we start with negative one and we flip all those bits, right? Boom, and now we're back to zero. And now we wanna get to positive one, right? Because we're trying to flip the order or, or we're trying to just negate negative one. So once again, we add one. So whether or not you have a negative number or a positive number, you flip all your bits, you add one and you've got the negation of the number you previously had. The exact mathematics for this, um, this, uh, this trick and why this works, it has to do with borrowing and subtraction in a, in a really clever and cool way. Um, I'll link to it and, and, and there'll be a link on this slide in the slide deck uh, with a more full explanation of it, if you're curious. But for now, just knowing uh, how to negate a two's complement number is fine. So there's some other interesting properties of two's complement. As I mentioned before, all of the low order bits, so every bit except for the high order bit, is gonna be the same regardless of whether you're dealing with, uh, uh, is gonna be the same. So for all positive numbers in an unsigned uh, integer, uh, the, the low order bits are the same uh, if you were to represent that same positive value with a signed integer, right? So the only difference is that high order bit. Uh, if we wanted to extend or, or move a, a, a two's complement number, that is in a smaller area of memory to a larger area of memory. So say we have a, a byte that is a, a signed byte two's complement value and we wanted to move it to a 64-bit uh, word uh, size uh, storage location in memory. There's this interesting trick. We're going to um, extend the high order bit uh, all the way from where it is currently or in the lower, in the smaller sized um, uh, storage unit in memory, we extend that, that bit all the way out to whatever space we just expanded our memory to uh, through a process called sign extension. And, uh, and, it, and the system continues to work out. And I would encourage playing around with that concept if, you feel, if it feels a little bit magical to you. Uh, subtraction works the same for both signed and unsigned. This winds up mattering and you'll see why in the next course when you look at computer organization. Um, for both of, these, uh, uh, both of these types of representations are gonna use the same uh, addition and subtraction logic. What happens is when you have a uh, assigned value and you're trying to subtract one signed value from another signed value, well, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna negate one of them, and then we're gonna use that same adder in order to, to carry out the, uh, the arithmetic. As I mentioned, there is a trade-off here, which is you've got an off by one asymmetry. This is why when you look at the ranges that you can represent in a signed value, no matter how big the bit field is, you, you're always gonna be off by one. You're gonna have one more possible negative value you can represent than the highest possible positive value, 
right? And this has some kind of weird implications at the edges of, of uh, these types of bit patterns. So that's a quick overview on signed integer representation using two's complement. Uh, and for our course, this is effectively the, the gist of what you need to get comfortable with. This is this idea that we can uh, introduce the ability to represent negative numbers through a cleverly designed system, which effectively is boils down to using the high order bit as rather than thinking of it as its positive value, we're going to flip uh, it and it would be its negative value instead. And that gives us now an offset that we can work with on the negative side and st while still representing uh, positive numbers on the other side of zero without having two duplicate representations of the value zero in our encoding. Great work.